So I've been playing around with iOS 16 for about a month now. It's been on my 13 mini and there's a lot of things that I've loved that I want to share with you. Now before I begin, I just want to point out there's chapters down below so you can jump to your desired section of the video. I'd also like to point out that this is beta software, so I don't really recommend that you put this on your main phone simply because I've been having a lot of issues like battery drain and the phone heating up. So I don't recommend it, but hey, it's totally up to you. So first and foremost, I'd like to start off at the lock screen, which got a huge overhaul in the iOS 16 update. It's one of my favorite things. The lock screen became much like watch faces. There's a lot of things that you can customize. You can add widgets. You can change the font of the clock. Notifications aren't as cluttered anymore. And you can even assign lock screens based on the focus you're using. A long press on any of the lock screens will bring up the option to customize it. Now, once you do hit customize, you get all sorts of options. You can go to the clock. Tapping on that is going to bring up the fonts that you can choose. You can change the color. What's cool is that every time you have a wallpaper, the iPhone automatically sets colors for widgets and fonts that'll match the lock screen. So, so far I haven't really gone in and changed anything myself. I've just let the iPhone do the job. Right beneath the clock, you've got the options for widgets. So tapping on any of the widgets is gonna bring up all the options you have. You've got weather widgets, calendar widgets, batteries widgets. Now I personally have put the weather, the fitness, and the batteries widget. If you've seen my iPhone setup video, I have three of these widgets actually sitting on my home screen. I like to know what the weather is gonna be like for the day so I can dress accordingly. I like to have my fitness activity always showing so I can keep a track of my fitness rings. And then also I really enjoy the batteries widget. Now. For the weather one, I've got the larger size. You can choose a smaller size, which is gonna show less information. Now for the fitness one, it just shows the rings. It's a very small widget, but since I know what each ring means, I can just quickly look at it and see the progress I've made so far in the day. Now the batteries widget I really like because, for example, I have my watch on right now, so you're seeing the watch status. But as soon as I put an AirPod on, it's gonna to switch to that and let me see the battery health of the AirPod. So I've got the AirPods 3 and the AirPods Max. So whichever one you put on, it's going to switch to one of those and show you that on the lock screen. I really like this option and I'm really excited to see what widgets are going to become on the lock screen, especially as third-party developers get involved. Now when customizing the lock screen down below is what I was talking about is the focus option. So tapping on this will let you assign that specific lock screen to a specific focus. So you've got different ones, you can assign them accordingly. Now, if we swipe over, you'll see I've got a bunch of different lock screen set up. So you can have different setups. So you can have certain widgets on some lock screens and certain ones. I've just got a bunch set up so that I can just keep things fresh and have a bunch of different options. Now, one thing I will say is that portrait photos really look great on the lock screen because it just has a 3D effect. They, they feel like they're coming out of the screen and they look very, very awesome. So if you've got a portrait picture that you really like, could be your pet, anything, you're really gonna enjoy seeing it on your lock screen. Now, speaking of seeing pictures, what's nice is that before all your notifications that came in just became a big cluttered mess. And you honestly couldn't even see the photo that you have set as your lock screen. Almost kind of defeats the purpose, right? But what's nice now is that notifications show up at the bottom. And what's nice is when multiple apps are sending you notifications, they all get bunched and a quick little tap on it will expand all the notifications so you can see them. And if you get rid of them, they'll go right back to the bottom. Also at the bottom is the media player. This is nice, so if you're listening to a podcast, you're listening to music, the media player is right there at the bottom. You can scrub through the track, you can switch to your AirPods, you can choose AirPlay options. It's nice to have that right there at the bottom. 
I've got a 13 mini, so reachability really isn't an issue for me. But what I really liked is that on larger devices like a 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, having the media controls at the bottom just makes it easier to control since it's right there in your thumb's reach. Now, another thing I'm looking forward to, which I haven't gotten a chance to test simply because it isn't available yet, is having live score updates in a widget format on the lock screen. So if you're somebody that watches sports and you have some sports app that has alerts on for specific games, you've probably been annoyed because you get so many different notifications. Well, now instead of you having to go into the app and refreshing the scores and whatnot, you can just see a live ticker at the bottom, giving you a live score of what's happening in the game instead of having different notifications coming in at different times. So that is something I'm really looking forward to. As far as the lock screens go, they're very easy to customize. It's very simple. You can do it right from the lock screen with the long press and just hitting the plus icon. You can swipe through all the available ones. And if you take any simple lock screen and swipe up, you have the option to delete it as well. So lock screen got a huge update and I absolutely love it. And I've really liked just having more information available so that I don't necessarily have to jump to my home screen to see it. Now I just gotta go back and redo the home screen. Now, speaking of the home screen, one nice addition is the search button. So Spotlight has its own little button, which is at the bottom. And again, very reachable. This is gonna be nice instead of swiping down all the time because I have so many apps that are not on my home screen, ones that I don't use as much. And for those, I'm always doing a quick search. So just having that right there just makes it really easy. So having that addition is really awesome. You can search for a contact app, whatever you wanna do with the spotlight feature, which is one feature I use a lot. So that is definitely a nice addition. Now, while we're talking about the home screen, you'll see I have a weather widget. And what's nice is that the weather app also got an update. So now if you tap on any kind of data inside of the weather app, it's going to give you more information. For example, you can literally scroll through and see the temperature as it's changing hour by hour. If you want air quality details, you can tap on those and get more information. So the weather app definitely got an overhaul and it's nice to have more weather information available. So if you're somebody that enjoys the weather app or knowing about the weather, you're gonna like this little update. Now also on my home screen is the fitness widget. Now the fitness app itself got a sweet little update. So prior to iOS 16, the fitness app needed you to have an Apple Watch so it could portray all your data, like your footsteps, all that good stuff. But now for the first time with iOS 16, what's nice is that even if you don't have an Apple Watch, it's going to be able to track things like your footsteps. Now it's not going to be as accurate as it is with an Apple Watch because with an Apple Watch, it's measuring things like your heart rate so it can more accurately portray the data to you. But it is nice to have your phone track all that data for you because there's been times where I forget to take my Apple Watch and that day just is an empty day in terms of fitness activity. Also, like I have two phones, so I have the 13 Pro, 13 Mini, and since my 13 Mini is the one that's paired with my Apple Watch, that is the one that always has all my fitness data. Whereas the 13 Pro is with me, but it's not able to show me any fitness data on my 13 Pro, simply because it's not using all those sensors inside the phone to track the data. But with iOS 16, that is gonna be a nice little change. And I'm really curious to see how the data is going to be different when you have an Apple Watch and when you don't have an Apple Watch. So this also is a sweet little update. All right, so now I'd like to move to the Messages app, which got a bunch of nice updates. For starters, you can actually edit a message after you've sent it. You can also delete a message. But do keep in mind, this right now only works with somebody else that has iOS 16. So 
don't try to edit messages and delete them with someone that doesn't have iOS 16 because it's simply not going to work. But being able to do that like you can do with other messaging apps is a very, very nice addition. Also, another nice thing is being able to mark messages as unread. So many times I look at a message and something else happens, something else comes up, and I totally forget to respond to that person. And other times I will just take a peep at a message and see what it's about, but not actually click on it and mark it as read because then I know that I'll have it read and I'll forget about it. So being able to read a message and then mark it as unread and just being able to go back and know that you have to reply to a specific person is a really, really awesome feature. That is something I personally really, really appreciate. Another nice improvement to the Messages app is Dictation. So Dictation actually does a better job. I've tried it. I previously never really liked it because I found that so many of the words that I spoke, maybe it's my little bit of an accent, but so many of the words I spoke didn't end up right. And then it also takes care of punctuation now. So you no longer need to say things like comma or period. You can just speak and it'll take care of the rest. I found it to do an accurate job most of the time. Now, another feature that I really use in messages is voice messages. Now with voice messages, it was always hard to do because you had to always keep your finger pressed on the voice message button. And as soon as you slightly moved your finger or let's say your phone went into landscape mode, that audio message would stop recording. So this no longer is an issue because now when you do a voice message, it comes up with a nice little screen. It has the microphone on there and you can just press and hold to record and it will just continuously record the message. And when you're ready and you're done, you can simply let go of it and it will just send that message over. Now, I personally really like this voice messages option because I use this a lot, especially when driving. And so just being able to have a simpler voice message option is a really nice addition and I'm really happy with this feature. And if you're somebody that uses voice messages a lot, you're going to appreciate this. Now, while we're on the topic of messaging, one nice addition is haptic feedback to the keyboard when typing. I don't know what took Apple so long because this is one of those features that I really, really loved in Android devices. Just being able to have my phone in silent mode and being able to get a feel for the keys as I press them is really awesome. The haptic engine on iPhones is really, really great. And the haptic feedback for the keyboard is really awesome. It's not too harsh, it's not too soft and mushy, it's just the right amount of feedback that you want, and I really, really love it. So if you are somebody that has had an Android phone and you've enjoyed haptic feedback, this is gonna be a feature that you're really gonna be happy about. Now, last but not least, one of my favorite features is the ability to schedule mail to be sent at a specific time. Now, let's say you've got a mail to send in the morning, well, you can get it done the night before, and when you go to send it, if you press and hold your finger on the send icon, you can actually schedule a specific time so that email can hit the other person's inbox at the right time that you want it to be there. That's something I use personally, and I really enjoy this little feature. Overall, iOS 16 comes with a bunch of new features, and I think it's going to be a really awesome update, especially the lock screen changes it's just a nice refresh to have. I wouldn't recommend you get the beta. I'd say just wait. And I really hope that this video is giving you a good preview as to what to expect from iOS 16, as I've shared majority of the things that have been updated. Thank you so much for your time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've got any questions for me. And most importantly, take care and I will see you in the next video.